The Umayyad conquest of Hispania was the initial expansion of the Umayyad Caliphate over Hispania, largely extending from 711 to 788. The conquest resulted in the destruction of the Visigothic Kingdom and the establishment of the independent Emirate of Córdoba under Abd ar Rahman I, who completed the unification of Muslim ruled Iberia, or al Andalus. 756 the conquest marks the westernmost expansion of both the Umayyad Caliphate and Muslim rule into Europe. During the Caliphate of the Umayyad Caliph al-Walid I, forces led by Tariq ibn Ziyad disembarked in early 711 in Gibraltar at the head of an army consisting of Berbers northwestern Africa. He campaigned his way northward after the decisive Battle of Guadalete against the usurper Radak, after which he was reinforced by an Arab force led by his superior Wali Musa ibn Nusair. By 717, the combined Arab-Berber force had crossed the Pyrenees into Septimania and Provence 734. Topic. Background The historian al-Tabari transmits a tradition attributed to the Caliph Uthman who stated that the road to Constantinople was through Hispania. Only through Spain can Constantinople be conquered. If you conquer Spain, you will share the reward of those who conquer Constantinople. The conquest of Hispania followed the conquest of North Africa. Walter Kagi calls Tabari's tradition dubious, and states that the conquest of far western reaches of the Mediterranean was motivated by exploiting military, political, and religious opportunities. He considers that it was not a shift in direction due to the Muslims failing to conquer Constantinople in 678. Historian Jessica Koop of University of Nebraska considers that the pre-modern Islamic thought believed that the conquest of Dar al-Harb was motivated by belief that others were better off under Islamic rule and the belief in the superiority of the concept of Islamic society, precisely what happened in Iberia in the early 8th century is uncertain. There is one contemporary Christian source, the Chronicle of 754 which ends on that date, regarded as reliable but often vague. There are no contemporary Muslim accounts, and later Muslim compilations, such as that of al-Makari from the 17th century, reflect later ideological influence. This paucity of early sources means that detailed specific claims need to be regarded with caution. The manner of King Radaik's ascent to the throne is unclear. There are accounts of a dispute with Achila II, son of his predecessor Widiza. Later regnal lists, which cite Achila and omit Radaik, are consistent with the contemporary account of civil war. Numismatic evidence suggests a division of royal authority, with several coinages being struck, and that Achila II remained king of the Tarakansense the Ebro Basin and Septimania until circa 713. The nearly contemporary chronicle of 754 describes Radaic as a usurper who earned the allegiance of other Goths by deception, while the less reliable late 9th century chronicle of Alfonso III shows a clear hostility towards Opa, Bishop of Seville or Toledo, and probably a brother of Witiza, who appears in an unlikely heroic dialogue with Pelagius. There is also a story of one Julian, Count of Suda, whose wife or daughter was raped by Radaic and who sought help from Tangier. However, these stories are not included in the earliest accounts of the conquest. Topic. Invasion According to the later chronicler Ibn Abd el Hakim, the Tangier governor Tariq ibn Ziyad led a raiding force approximately 1,700 men strong from North Africa to southern Spain in 711. However, 12,000 seems a more accurate figure. Ibn Abd el Hakim reports, one and a half centuries later, that, the people of Andalus did not observe them, thinking that the vessels crossing and recrossing were similar to the trading vessels which for their benefit plied backwards and forwards. They defeated the Visigothic army, led by King Radaic, in a decisive battle at Guadalete in 712. Tariq's forces were then reinforced by those of his superior, the Wali Musa ibn Nusair, and both took control of most of Iberia with an army estimated at 10,000 to 15,000 combatants. According to the Muslim historian Muhammad ibn Jarir al Tabari, Iberia was first invaded some 60 years earlier during the Caliphate of Uthman. Rashidun era. Another prominent Muslim historian of the 13th century, Ibn Kathir, quoted the same narration, pointing to a campaign led by Abd Allah bin Nafi al Husayn and Abd Allah bin Nafi al Abd al Qis in 32 AH. However, this putative invasion is not accepted by modern historians. 
The first expedition led by Tariq was made up mainly of Berbers who had themselves only recently come under Muslim influence. It is probable that this army represented a continuation of a historic pattern of large-scale raids into Iberia dating to the pre-Islamic period, and hence it has been suggested that actual conquest was not originally planned. Both the Chronicle of 754 and later Muslim sources speak of raiding activity in previous years, and Tariq's army may have been present for some time before the decisive battle. It has been argued that this possibility is supported by the fact that the army was led by a Berber and that Musa, who was the Umayyad governor of North Africa, only arrived the following year. The governor had not stooped to lead a mere raid, but hurried across once the unexpected triumph became clear. The historian Abd al Wahid Danun Taha mentions that several Arab Muslim writers mention the fact that Tariq has decided to cross the strait without informing his superior and Wali Musa. The Chronicle of 754 states that many townspeople fled to the hills rather than defend their cities, which might support the view that this was expected to be a temporary raid rather than a permanent change of government. The Chronicle of 754 stated that, "...the entire army of the Goths, which had come with him fraudulently and in rivalry out of hopes of the kingship, fled." This is the only contemporary account of the battle and the paucity of detail led many later historians to invent their own. The location of the battle is not totally clear but was probably the Guadalete River. Radaic was believed to have been killed, and a crushing defeat would have left the Visigoths largely leaderless and disorganized, partly because the ruling Visigoth population is estimated to have been a mere 1-2% of the total population. While this isolation is said to have been a reasonably strong and effective instrument of government, it was highly centralized to the extent that the defeat of the royal army left the entire land open to the invaders." The resulting power vacuum, which may have indeed caught Tariq completely by surprise, would have aided the Muslim conquest immensely. It may have been equally welcome to the Hispano-Roman peasants who were probably as D.W. Lomax claims, disillusioned by the prominent legal, linguistic and social divide between them and the barbaric and decadent Visigoth royal family. In 714, Musa ibn Nusayr headed northwest up the Ebro River to overrun the western Basque regions and the Cantabrian Mountains all the way to Gaiaisia, with no relevant or attested opposition. During the period of the second or first, depending on the sources, Arab governor Abd al Aziz ibn Musa (714–716), the principal urban centers of Catalonia surrendered. In 714, his father, Musa ibn Nusayr, advanced and overran Soria, the western Basque regions, Palencia, and as far west as Gijón or Leon, where a Berber governor was appointed with no recorded opposition. The northern areas of Iberia drew little attention to the conquerors and were hard to defend when taken. The high western and central sub-Pyrenean valleys remained unconquered. At this time, Umayyad troops reached Pamplona, and the Basque town submitted after a compromise was brokered with Arab commanders to respect the town and its inhabitants, a practice that was common in many towns of the Iberian Peninsula. The Umayyad troops met little resistance. Considering that era's communication capabilities, three years was a reasonable time spent almost reaching the Pyrenees, after making the necessary arrangements for the town's submissions and their future governance. New territorial and civil administration In 713, Abd al-Aziz ibn Musa subdued the forces of the Visigothic Count Thedimer or Tudmir, who had taken over southeastern Iberia from his base in Mercia after the power vacuum following King Radaic's defeat. Thedimer then signed a conditional capitulation by which his lands were made into an autonomous client state under Umayyad rule. The rule of God. His government and the Christian beliefs of his subjects were respected. In exchange, he pledged to pay a tax and to hand over any rebels plotting against Umayyad rule or the Islamic religion. In this way, the life of many inhabitants remained much the same as before Tariq's and Musa's campaigns. The treaty signed with Thedimer set a precedent for the whole of Iberia, and towns surrendering to Umayyad troops experienced a similar fate, including probably the Mawalid Banu Qasi based in the Ebro Valley, and other counts and landowners. In exception to this pattern, some towns Cordova, Toledo, etc. were stormed and captured unconditionally by the Umayyads, to be governed by direct Arab rule. 
In the area thought to be part of King Radaik's territory, Merida also staged a prolonged resistance to the Umayyad advance, but was ultimately conquered in midsummer 712. As of 713 or 714, the last Visigothic king, Ardo, took over from Achila II, with effective control just over Septimania, and probably the eastern Pyrenean threshold and coastal areas of the Tarakanens. Islamic laws did not apply to all the subjects of the new rulers. Christians were ruled by their own Visigothic law code Forum Uticum as before. In most of the towns, ethnic communities remained segregated and newly arriving ethnic groups Syrians, Yemenites, Berbers and others would erect new boroughs outside existing urban areas. However, this would not apply to towns under direct Umayyad rule. In Cordova, the cathedral was partitioned and shared to provide for the religious needs of Christians and Muslims. This situation lasted some 40 years until Abd ar Rahman's conquest of southern Spain. 756. An early governor Wali of al Andalus, al Hur ibn Abd al Rahman al Thakafi, spread the rule of the Umayyad Caliphate up to the Ebro Valley and the northeastern borders of Iberia, pacifying most of the territory and initiating in 717 the first forays across the Pyrenees into Septimania. In addition, he laid out the foundations of Umayyad civil administration in Iberia, by sending civil administration officials judges to conquered towns and lands guarded by garrisons established usually next to the population nuclei. Moreover, al hur restored lands to their previous Christian landowners, which may have added greatly to the revenue of the Umayyad governors and the Caliph of Damascus, since only non-Muslims were subject to taxation. The task of establishing a civil administration in conquered al-Andalus was essentially completed by the governor Yahya ibn Salama al-Kalbi ten years later. The period following al hurs office saw the establishment of the Arabs in southern Septimania during al-Samh ibn Malik al-Kalani's tenure as Wali. Narbonne fell 720, and no sooner had he garrisoned it than the Arab commander led an offensive against Toulouse. During this Umayyad thrust or its aftermath, King Ardo died 721. Topic. Ethnic groups and internal tensions In the first stage of the invasion, the armies were made up of Berbers and different Arab groups. These peoples, clustered around the banner of the Umayyads, did not mix together, remaining in separate towns and boroughs. The Berbers, recently subdued and superficially Islamized, were usually in charge of the most difficult tasks and the most rugged terrains, similar to the ones found in their North African homeland, while the Arabs occupied the Gentler plains of southern Iberia. Consequently, the Berbers went on to stations in Galicia, possibly including Asturias, and the upper marches Ebro Basin, but these lands remained unpleasant, humid and cold. The grievances resented by the Berbers under Arab rulers attempts to impose a tax on Muslim Berbers, etc. sparked rebellions in North Africa that expanded into Iberia. An early uprising took place in 730, when Uthman ibn Nisa Munuza, master of the Eastern Pyrenees Saratania, allied with the Duke Odo of Aquitaine and detached from Cordova. Those internal frictions continually threatened or sometimes may have spurred the ever-expanding Umayyad military effort in Al-Andalus during the conquest period. Around 739, on learning the news of Charles Martel's second intervention in Provence, Uqba ibn al-Hajjaj had to call off an expedition to the Lower Rhone in order to deal with the Berber revolt in the south instead. The following year, the Berber garrisons stationed in Leon, Astorga and other northwestern outposts gave up their positions, and some of them even embraced the Christian religion. The Muslim settlement was thereafter established permanently south of the Doros banks. The Berber rebellion swept the whole of al-Andalus during Abd al-Malik ibn Qatan al-Firi's term as governor. Reinforcements were then called from the other end of the Mediterranean in a military capacity, the Syrian. Juns actually Yemeni Arabs. The Berber rebellions were quelled in blood, and the Arab commanders came up reinforced after 742. Different Arab factions reached an agreement to alternate in office, but this did not last long, since Yusuf ibn Abd al-Rahman al-Firi opposed to the Umayyads remained in power up to his defeat by Abd al-Rahman I in 756, and the establishment of the independent Umayyad Emirate of Cordova. It was in this period of unrest that the Frankish King Pepin finally captured Narbonne from the Andalusians 759. In Yusuf's and Abd ar Rahman's fight for power in al-Andalus, the Syrian troops, a mainstay of the Umayyad Caliphate, split. 
For the most part, Arabs from the Mudhar and Qais tribes sided with Yusuf, as did the indigenous second or third generation Arabs from northern Africa, while Yemeni units and some Berbers sided with Abd ar Rahman, probably born to a North African Berber mother himself. In 756, South and Central Al Andalus Cordova, Sevilla, were in the hands of Abd ar Rahman, but it took still 25 years for him to hold sway over the upper marches Pamplona, Zaragoza, and all the northeast. Aftermath The Iberian Peninsula was the westernmost tip of the Umayyad Caliphate of Damascus and was under the rule of the governor of Ifriqiya. In 720, the caliph even considered abandoning the territory. The conquest was followed by a period of several hundred years during which most of the Iberian Peninsula was known as Al-Andalus, dominated by Muslim rulers. Only a handful of new small Christian realms managed to reassert their authority across the faraway mountainous north of the peninsula. In 756, Abd ar Rahman I, a survivor of the recently overthrown Umayyad dynasty, landed in al Andalus and seized power in Cordova and Seville, and proclaimed himself emir or malik, removing any mentions of the Abbasid caliphs from the Friday prayers. In the wake of these events, southern Iberia became de jure and de facto independent from the Abbasid caliphate. Although this was not accepted outside Al-Andalus and those North African territories with which it was affiliated, Abd ar Rahman, and especially his successors, considered that they were the legitimate continuation of the Umayyad Caliphate, i.e. that their rule was more legitimate than that of the Abbasids. It seems that Abd ar Rahman never considered establishing a separate principality, see Caliphate of Cordoba. During the unification of Al-Andalus in the reign of Abd ar Rahman before his death in 788, Al-Andalus underwent centralization and slow but steady homogenization. The autonomous status of many towns and regions negotiated in the first years of the conquest was reversed by 778, in some cases much earlier Pamplona by 742, for example. The Hispanic church based in Toledo, whose status remained largely undiminished under the new rulers, fell out with the Roman church during the adoptionist controversy late 8th century. Rome relied on an alliance with Charlemagne in war with the Cordovan emirs to defend its political authority and possessions, and went on to recognize the northern Asturian principality as a kingdom apart from Cordova, and Alfonso II as king. The population of Al-Andalus, especially local nobles who aspired to a share in power, began to embrace Islam and the Arabic language. However, the majority of the population remained Christian using the Mozarabic rite, and Latin Mozarabic remained the principal language until the 11th century. Abd ar Rahman I founded an independent dynasty that survived until the 11th century. That line was succeeded by a variety of short and small emirates taifas unable to stop the push of the expanding northern Christian kingdoms. The Almoravids and the Almohads occupied Al-Andalus next, and the Marinids in 1269, but that could not prevent the fragmentation of Muslim-ruled territory. The last Muslim emirate, Granada, was defeated by the armies of Castile successor to Asturias and Aragon under Isabella and Ferdinand in 1492. The last wave of expulsions of Spaniards of Muslim descent took place in 1614. <laughs> Chronology As discussed above, much of the traditional narrative of the conquest is more legend than reliable history. Some of the key events and the stories around them are outlined below. 710 Tariq ibn Ziyad, a Berber freedman, lands with 400 men and 100 horses on the tiny peninsula now called Gibraltar Jebel al Tariq, Mountain of Tariq, after his name. 711 Musa ibn Nusair, governor of Ifriqiya in North Africa, dispatches Tariq into the Iberian Peninsula. 711 July 19, King Roderick's army utterly routed in the Battle of Guadalete somewhere in the Guadalquivir Valley. 712 Musa ibn Nusayr joins Tariq after the Battle of Guadalete and both go on to attack towns and strongholds previously avoided. Abu Zora Tarif lands in Algeciras. 713 The Udamir's conditional surrender, allowing him to remain lord of his southeastern region around Mercia 715 Abd al-Aziz ibn Musa announces first Wali of Andalus and marries the widow of King Roderick, Egalona. Seville becomes the capital. 
717–18 Al-Hur ibn Abd al-Rahman al-Thakafi starts the first military campaigns into Gothic Septimania. 719 Al-Samh ibn Malik al-Khalani, 4th Wali, transfers the seat of governor from Seville to Cordova. Barcelona and Narbonne captured. 721 An Umayyad army led by Al-Samh crushed by Duke Odo's Aquitanian army at the Battle of Toulouse. Balat al Shuhada of Toulouse. 722 An Umayyad patrol defeated by Pelagius at the Battle of Covadonga in the mountains of Asturias. 725 Anbasa ibn Sahayim al Kalbi subdues all Septimania, raids the Lower Rhone, and captures Autun. 731 Munuza defeated in Serdanya by Abdul Rahman al Ghafiqi. Spring 732 An expedition led by the Wali al Ghafiqi vanquishes Duke Odo at the Battle of the River Garan. October 732 Al Ghafiqi totally routed by Charles Martel, mayor of the palace at the Merovingian court, at the Battle of Tours, Balat al Shuhada, of Poitiers. 734 Count Morantis calls Umayyad forces on a military capacity into Arles, Avignon, and probably Marseille. 740 to 42 Berbers in northern Iberia, Galicia, Leon, Astorga, Upper Ebro, give up their positions to join the Berber revolts. 743 to 757 Alfonso I of Asturias raids the territory between the rivers Duero and Ebro but doesn't retain it. 743 Mudarites and Yemenites agree on choosing alternately one of their numbers each year to rule Al-Andalus. 747 Governor Yusuf ibn Abd al-Rahman al-Firi, a Mudarite and descendant of Uqba ibn Nafia, refuses to give turn to the Yemenite candidate and rules autonomously. 755 Rebellion in Zaragoza quashed, and Yusuf's detachment annihilated by the Basques near Pamplona. 755 Abd al-Rahman al-Dakal lands on the southern coast, taking in a quick succession Granada, Seville and Cordova. 756 After refusing to compromise with Yusuf, Abd ar rahman i independent Umayyad Emir of Cordova. Yusuf defeated. 759 Narbonne captured by the Frankish King Pepin the Short. 763 Pro Abbasid army defeated by Abd ar rahman i in Carmona. 778 Charlemagne repelled in Zaragoza by Muslim local lords. 779 Abd ar Rahman I campaigns to the upper marches and subdues its main city, Zaragoza. 781 Pamplona and the Basque lords south of the Pyrenean fringes subdued. All of Al Andalus unified. 788 Abd ar Rahman I dies. See also Timeline of the Muslim presence in the Iberian Peninsula Topic. Footnotes Topic. Sources Collins, Roger The Arab Conquest of Spain 710–797. Oxford, UK, Cambridge, USA, Blackwell. ISBN 0-631-19405-3